What's up everybody, this is Smarty P from SmartyPantsCoding.com uh, I also go by Roger Peters. I run All Mobile Everything, which is a little m mobile consultancy here in Atlanta. And I wanted to take a quick break from Furious Coding I've been doing the last few months. And I wanted to do kind of an intro video for MonoTouch. Uh, for people who are .NET developers, maybe Silverlight developers, or Windows 8 developers, or Windows Phone developers. Uh, but people who want to get into iOS development but have no interest in learning Objective-C uh, and probably don't want to learn JavaScript to be able to use PhoneGap or Accelerator Titanium. Uh, and that's why I want to show you MonoTouch and MonoDevelop because uh, it's it's been absolutely amazing to be developing on this the last few months as a C-sharp developer. And in my opinion, uh, and in the team I used to manage is uh, their opinion, uh, MonoTouch is really the best cross-platform solution right now. So what I want to do is just run you through real quick, show you how easy it can be to create and get an iOS app running as a .NET developer. So the first thing you've got is you've got to have a Mac. So you can see I'm on a Mac. Um, there's really no way around that. The only possible way around that is if you want to run a Hackintosh. Uh, I do have a friend who successfully has done that and is doing MonoTouch development on it. It is a little bit slower than, an, than a real Mac. Um, but it is possible potentially if you have the right hardware to set up a, Mac, uh, a Hackintosh uh, and put OS X on that uh, and Mono, uh, Mono, Mono Touch and Mono Develop on that as well. Um, but otherwise, you really do have to have a Mac because that's what you need to be able to run the simulator. That's what you need to be able to build. Um, so I am on a Mac. So the first thing I'm going to do is launch Mono Develop, uh, which is essentially Visual Studio, but for Mac. It's created by Xamarin. Uh, and I'm just going to start a new solution. And here under C Sharp, I've got Mono Touch. And you see I've got iPad, iPad Storyboard, iPhone, Universal, Universal Storyboard. Basically, Universal, all that means is you're creating one app that works on both iPad and iPhone. Uh, that's kind of the way I typically tend to go. But if you wanted to make something that was just on one or the other, maybe you'd use one of these others. But we're going to use Universal. Uh, there's Universal and, and Universal Storyboard. Uh, basically, in iOS 5, they added a new way to define your UIs. Uh, in Xcode uh, using storyboards, um, but for now we're just going to stick to more traditional layouts because it's just got to be a one screen app. So I'm going to hit uh, empty project here just so you can get a sense of uh, how everything is put together. I'm going to call this test app number three. And basically it's going to create a new solution just like you know, you're doing Visual Studio. And what you end up with is pretty similar, right? I've got a solution, it's got a project in it, I've got references, this is where my libraries are. I could include system.xml, I could include a reference to another project, so hopefully that's pretty familiar. Um, but then you have a couple of other things that are a little different. You've got your main.cs, which you know is just the main thing that starts everything running. Most .NET apps have something like that. But then you have this app delegate. Without getting into too much detail, uh, you can see it's based on UI application delegate. And anytime you see UI in the class name, you should just think, okay, this is part of the iOS UI toolkit. This is part of the the UI for iOS. So, for instance, you won't have a label. You'll have a UI label. You won't have a slider control. You'll have a UI slider control. Um, so that's what you should think whenever you see this UI is essentially, you know, that's part of MonoTouch's uh, UI kit for iOS. So you can see here UI window, which is the root level window it creates. Uh, it needs to have a view added to that root level um, window before it is shown, uh, which isn't being done yet because we haven't created a view yet. So let's go and create a view. I usually put them in a folder and I usually call that folder views, even though technically what we're creating is a view controller. So hopefully that doesn't control confuse anyone too much. And I don't need to add files, I need to add a new file. Mono touch. You see the last thing we got here, universal view controller. So this is going to be a view controller that works on iPad and iPhone. And we're just going to call this main view controller. Once I create this, I get a class here. You can see in my views I now have uh, the main code behind file, which is what we're looking at here. I've got two .zip files. .zip files are the layout files that you're going to have and that you're going to use an interface builder in Xcode to lay out your UI. If we were doing a storyboard like we saw earlier, I told you that they uh, added storyboard UIs in iOS 5, then you actually wouldn't have a different zip per uh, view controller. You'd actually only have one main storyboard zip that all views used uh, and it defines all your views. But for now, um, we're going to have one view controller and it's going to have one view that is associated with it. But as you can clearly see, we have an iPad view and an iPhone view and that's because whenever you lay this out in Interface Builder, you're actually going to lay out your iPhone and your iPad separately. 
you, you could potentially lay out the iPhone 5 separately if you wanted. And the way that this works is you can see over here uh, in our, we've, I'll just start at the top. So this first Boolean property, user interface idiom is phone, is, this, is basically a nice way of saying, is this thing an iPhone or an iPad? And all it does is check the current device and see, see is it an iPhone or an iPad? And you'll see this method is, the, the, I'm sorry, this property is then immediately used in the main con, uh, view controller's constructor. And what it does is it checks and it says, is this an iPhone? If it's an iPhone, then it uses this zip file. And if it's an iPad, then it uses that zip file. And so all this is doing is branching on the constructor itself and saying, okay, which view am I going to show? Is this thing an iPad or an iPhone? So you can see if we if we want to do an iPhone 5 as a separate view, uh, you don't have to do that. You can use iPhone for both and just kind of tweak layouts manually uh, or, you know, potentially use the same one for both if you've got all your scaling done right. But in any event, you could write something custom here that could actually pass in, you know, one of three different views, one, you know, that included the iPhone 5, for instance. Um, the next thing you see here, we've got did receive memory warning, and all this is just plumbing you, that you kind of get out of the box. So is there any cleanup you should do if you get this war memory warning? Um, what do you want to happen whenever the view actually loads? Uh, the first time it gets initialized. Um, so I'm actually going to, I usually write a method called wire up elements. Put that down here. Actually, just to show you, you get a lot of the niceties of Visual Studio. I can hit refactor, create method. It's a little different. You use up and down, move to where you want it, hit enter, and there you go. It just generated that method for us. And what I usually do is outside of uh, this constructor, I usually just wrap all the plumbing stuff in a region. Um, iOS plumbing, which is exactly why people, some people say that regions are bad because you hide code. And that's exactly what I'm doing with it. There you go. So we've got our main constructor up here. It's going to switch and tell us which uh, which zip file to use, and then we've got our wire up elements that gets fired the first time this thing is done uh, loading. This would get fired each time, or it would only get fired once when it's created, not each time the view is shown. If you wanted uh, something that was run each time the view was shown, you'd actually override a different method called view will appear. And so, like if the if the app got moved to the background or whatever. Um, and you wanted to always update something like if you had a timer that was maybe running, a uh, view will appear tells you any time it's about to show and you want to update it the first time, whereas view did load is just the first time uh, that everything's getting wired up. So this is good for like one-time wire up, things like connecting events to your buttons and such. Now that we've got this done, I'm just going to jump over here and we're going to start looking at how to build UIs. So I double click this zip file and it actually opens up this view in Xcode. And this is why uh, I'm such a big fan of MonoTouch is because you're actually using Xcode's interface builder. You're not creating things programmatically in JavaScript. You're not using some control that kind of sort of looks like the native controls. You're using absolutely native controls that just happen to have C-sharp wrappers uh, that are generated uh, off of the native libraries. So I'm here in Xcode. You can see this drop down. I've got my two different views, the iPhone and the iPad. I'm only worrying about the iPhone one. And I want you to notice that this icon is white right now. Because as soon as we make any changes, what I'm going to do is change the size of this main window. I'm going to change it to see what it looked like on an iPhone 5, a full screen Retina 4 inch uh, display. I'm going to keep the status bar up there, but you could toggle that on and off. And you can now see this icon has turned gray. And that essentially just tells you it's not saved. So I hit Control S, now it's saved. What I'm going to do is just put a button on this form. I'm going to put a label on this form. And all we're going to do is some really simple hello world type stuff between these. So normally what you would expect in Visual Studio or in Blend is to have a property panel over here, something called name. And you just go and type in the name, call it my button, and that's that. It's a little bit different uh, here in Xcode whenever you're using Interface Builder uh, in that what you actually do is you connect to the .h file. So if you were a Objective-C developer, you would be dealing in these .h files, these interfaces, all day and night. Uh, but the nice thing about MonoTouch is this is the only one you'll ever see. Uh, and what you're doing here is exactly what you would do as a native developer as well. And what you're doing is you're tying these controls here and basically giving them a name in this interface. So I hold down Start, I drag over here, and it's going to create an outlet, and I'm just going to call it My Button, and hit Connect. Do the same thing for the label. You can drag from over here as well. My label. And so instead of having a property panel over here where you name it, 
you just drag it, drop it, name it, save it, save this one, and then when we come back over here to monitor develop, you're going to see it's going to update in the lower left. You can see it's updating from Xcode. That is one thing you have to get used to is when you jump between Xcode and monitor develop, um, you are going to have a little bit of a lag because what it's actually doing is uh, basically you have like a fake Xcode project that has these zip files in it. And when you come back over into mono touch, it's just pulling those changes back. So now that that's all done, uh, you'll see I actually have access and I can say my button dot touch and let's see the one I want is touch up inside and then you just add your event handler lambda expression or event handler or however you want to do it uh, just like you would in normal .NET development I'm gonna say why not we'll make a method called hello world and all it's gonna do is update my label did I not call it my label? that's all I called it my label my button my label, there we go, my label dot text equals hello world, why not, that's totally not played out yet. So we're gonna call hello world from our event handler here, right? Oh, forgot a semicolon there. And I uh, was about to run it, but actually remember our app get delegate, we still haven't defined what's our main view we're gonna show. So in here I need to show that view. So I'm going to take main view controller and just call it root controller equals new main view controller. And I'm just going to call add sub view root controller dot view. So essentially we just created a view controller which has a view uh, and that's what we're going to be adding is the main root um, view that's going to be showed in our main window that's about to be shown. Um, I would run this here, but this actually would cause you problems and start crashing once you started interacting with things. And the reason is um, there's very active garbage collection in Monotouch, and that's a good thing. Um, what's happening here is we're creating this main view controller, we're adding it as a sub view here, and we're returning. But as far as Mono is concerned, there's no reference left to this. And so it's actually going to destroy it immediately. It's going to clean it up. So as soon as your events start firing, it's not going to be able to get a handle on this view controller anymore. So we actually want to define the root view controller at the class level. And that way we can be sure there's always a reference to this main root controller that's part of this main app. I do want to show you that the debugging experience is just like you would expect. So let me... Uh, put a little breakpoint inside this lambda, hit the run with debugging. Whenever this pulls up, it's going to pull up in the uh, iOS simulator, which is actually really good. Um, it it lags a little bit like if you're doing like high-end gaming or something that, you know, is pushing a lot of pixels or if you're running the emulator is, you know, a retina display iPad. Um, but outside of that, the emulator is actually really great. So whenever this thing starts running, um, it's going to wire up our elements, which attacks, attaches our event handler. And whenever I click on the button, it's going to run this method, hello world. So hit the button, runs my method. I've got debugging. See, I can check and look just like you would expect in Visual Studio. Keep running, and now my text is updated to hello world. So I hope that was a good introduction to show you like how you can leverage C Sharp in iOS development. Uh, I think a lot of people right now are kind of avoiding iOS that are maybe .NET developers because they don't think that, you know, they don't want to learn Objective-C and I totally agree with that and maybe they don't want to learn, you know, what they need for Accelerator. Uh, but you can use C Sharp and you can use it really, really well. Uh, I've ported several, two apps now to, to iOS and they both ported really easily. I can't say enough about Monotouch. Obviously, there is a licensing charge, but uh, in my opinion, it's in, incredibly worth it. Um, the Mac, you know, having to own a Mac, there's a charge there too. Uh, so, you know, just to get started there, you're looking at a couple grand. Uh, but when you compare a couple of grand to uh, having to relearn an entirely new language and give up on C Sharp, um, it's definitely worth it. Uh, it's definitely worth it for product productivity as well. All right, the next video that I'm going to do. <coughs> Excuse me. The next video I'm going to do is going to be on how to speed up your development and get more familiar with your Mac. Uh, one of the biggest problems you're going to notice whenever you start is that home and end keys don't work like they should. Home and end on a Mac takes you to the start of the of the document, the end of the document, which is uh, pretty well useless to a developer like me. 
So I have figured out uh, a good number of tools that help make using your Mac uh, keyboard or your PC keyboard on a Mac uh, a lot more reliable so that the buttons do what you expect. So Control c is still copy and Shift Home and Shift N still highlights the whole row and things like that. So uh, keep an eye out for my next video and thanks for watching this one. Thanks.